Carlos Watson. He has been covering the campaign for Aussie Media, the online news magazine he founded. Carlos, good morning. Good morning. So we heard Errol there say both sides are pointing, uh, positioning their rival as the worst option. Mm -hmm. How does all of this discussion about foreign policy, who benefits more as a candidate? You know, you would expect it to be Hillary Clinton, given uh, her experience as Secretary of State, given the kind of bipartisan support that she's attracted, including people like Petraeus and John Allen and others. Uh, but what was interesting was the John Kerry um, Russia deal on Syria, and does that in some ways ultimately validate um, uh, what Donald Trump is claiming, that we should be working with Putin and Russia more. Uh, remains to be seen, a lot of complexity there, uh, but clearly the forum earlier this week on foreign policy didn't help Hillary Clinton as much as she would have hoped. The uh, polls this week, Carlos, show Trump gaining ground in some key swing states. Sure. What, what does he have to win? So he not only has to take the states that Mitt Romney won, which uh, gave him about 206 electoral votes, um, and that means you got to hold on to Georgia, Arizona, North Carolina, but then we got to look at some of the swing states. So we know Ohio and Florida, but where else? we got to think about Iowa as an example. We may even think about a place like Wisconsin. We may think about Nevada, but could be tough because of a large Latino population. But then he needs one to tip the balance, and we're talking about Pennsylvania or Michigan. Today, those polls don't look good, but we've got a big debate coming. Yeah. Talk to us about this new ad, especially in light of those numbers, because yeah. Hillary Clinton, a lot of critics have said, has been in a very negative place. And now we're seeing a new ad that's it's a positive ad, I think most would agree. Yeah, I think she's she wants to make an affirmative case, particularly to the Gary Johnson uh, voters. So he's got 10 percent, 11 percent, depending on the polls. And so I think she's clear that there's only so much you can do with the never Trump population and the very strongly pro Hillary population. And so I think she's looking to gain some ground there also with undecided. So you've heard her begin to talk about education in different ways. She's gone back to a calling card that was good for her husband's two successful campaigns, which is the economy and the belief that she can create many new jobs. How much damage do you think Gary Johnson did to him this self this week with when he couldn't answer the question of, of about Aleppo like and didn't know where world, it was? Right? You know, it, it felt like a Rick Perry moment. You remember yeah. Rick Perry in the uh, yeah. in the primary debates in yeah. 2012, the oops. Um, I think it was one of those moments, if you remember Admiral Stockdale back in the day, who was Ross Perot's running mate, yeah. and literally in less than five seconds, kind of meaningfully undercut his campaign. It was interesting to see, though, the rampant Google searches. So it certainly yeah. brought this region to front and center. People are now talking about it. it very much so. And, and you know, one of the uh, uh, tough things about the Syrian case um, is that there's so many angles to it. As we saw uh, earlier this week, again, John Kerry and his Russian counterpart trying to find some road forward, not only for the refugees, but in terms of fighting um, ISIL and the Islamic militants. All right, Carlos Watson, we should say you've, you've, uh, you've produced a documentary with uh, PBS called 16 for 16, The Contenders, which examines some of the most influential presidential campaigns. We look forward to that. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Carlos Watson. Tomorrow morning on Face the Nation here on CBS, John Dickerson's guest will include CIA Director John Brennan.